New York, 1980s. A new scene was created expressing freedom and art allowing young people to be themselves. A scene that would later influence others for decades to come. Known as Club Kids, they were creative, imaginative, and wild. As seen here on The Phil Donahue Show, their popularity was reaching new heights from appearing in music videos and on the cover of magazines. Here in London, the New Romantics, also known as the Blitz Kids, were causing a scene. There is a new wave of young people carrying on the club kid trend in central London. The new wave continues in bars and clubs such as Shadow Lounge, Cirque Le Soir, and The Box. The nightlife is more glamorous than ever and the legacy of club kids is still very alive in today's society. Some of the young adults still carrying the trend in the 20th century are Nikki Ottav, Harry Whitfield, Ernie Omega, and the collective group Housebound. One of London's most stylish club kids is a performer and event host. I'm Harry Whitfield, I'm 19 years old, and I'm a club kid. I guess my club kid looks are really budget. Um, it doesn't cost me a lot to be a club kid at all. I spend next to nothing on my image. I don't think you need to spend a lot of money to look amazing. And I think I'm, this is an example of that. Like these, all of these jewels that I'm wearing, all these giant, massive, really opulent jewels, they're all less than 10 pounds each. Like the, the, these earrings and my necklace and probably this sort of headpiece all come in a set for 20 pounds. So it's bargain and re I reuse them all the time. When they break, I snap them off and glue them to my face. And uh, my eyelashes are all the cheapest kind of eyelashes that I can find. All my makeup I buy from um, like a big makeup, makeup cosmetics shop. So it's super, super cheap. I never spend anything over a fiver on any of my makeup. The first outfit that I shot in today was a blazer and trousers set that I bought from a fancy dress shop. I then matched with green makeup and a balaclava. I was wearing my platforms, which are my everyday shoes with it, and lots of gold jewellery, lots of really, really inexpensive um, crystal jewellery. My second outfit was pretty much nothing, just, just underwear, which is what I normally, which is my basis for every outfit I go out in. I start with underwear and then build up on top of that. Um, because underwear is my, my starting point for make most looks. Known to many as one of the shapers of the 80s, when it came to fashion, Scarlett Cannon was a style icon, club promoter, model, and an all-around party girl, often photographed for her exquisitely wild and captivating style. Back in the day, we were just living our lives. It took me actually a very, very long time to realize and accept my part in it in terms of being an inspiration to people. Now I can accept, yes, I was um, a style icon, but at the time I was just living my life, having a good time, doing what I wanted to do. It wasn't a conscious thing. I think, as I say, when I look back on it, then I can say, yeah, it probably was an expression of, of an art form of a type of that. I think that's a rather pretentious way to put it. The bottom line is we were enjoying ourselves. Scarlett Cannon reflects on her most famous look to date as a Blitz kid. This is the red dress that was in the V&A Club to Catwalk exhibition. Obviously, looking a hundred times better on a mannequin or a form as it, uh, than it does here. And this was made by Julie Sissons, who is a very, very well-respected um, lecturer and technician. I think nowadays it's more about a whole image, and back then it was more about shock. It was more things that they hadn't seen before, and nowadays people are more conscious about the way that they look all together. People are more scared to club kids these days, I feel, have a fear of being unattractive. I don't care if I look unattractive, I'd rather go out looking ugly. It takes more guts to go out looking ugly and freaky, which is exactly how it used to be, and I think that culture needs to be brought back because 
it's easy to put some lipstick on and put eyelashes on. It's really not hard, but if you want to terrify people, you want to cause people's thoughts to wonder, then looking freaky and looking scary is the best way to do it. The new wave of current club kids is more international than ever. In Sweden, double act duo Rock are known for their outrageous club kids style and music. Hi, we are duo Rock from Sweden. Everything we wear, we create. Uh, except the gloves. Except the they gloves. They were a present. They were a present from Majesty Black. It takes forever to do some things, but we love to do it. Here at Cirque Le Soir at the Grand Ganton Hotel, we meet Duo Raw in the midst of a Christmas not so themed photo shoot alongside fellow club kid Boom Boom. We draw a lot of inspiration from like the creative forces that are out there in the nightlife. And I mean, a lot of them are not famous, and some of them are current, and some of them uh, are dead since a long time. We'll also try to do something different and new. Lee Bowery, one of the leading faces in the 80s, stole the show with his outrageous and colorful outfits all handmade to perfection. His influence moved the fashion industry and influenced many designers. Lee was known for his incredible outfits and unforgettable performances, although Lee's fabulous reign ended on New Year's Eve, 1994. Lee Bowery first came to Cha Cha, that's where he first came on the scene because I'd been called up by my friend Graham to say, will you look after this boy? He hasn't been in London long, he's Australian. And he turned up with his little blonde hair in this horrible blue velvet cape. And I said, well, you can come in because Graham's told me about you, but you have to ditch the cape. You know, you can't wear that here, it's two years out of date. I dress up to, and to feel comfortable when I'm out. I dress up because I like the attention and not many people will say that, but I love the attention that I get when I'm out. I deserve it, look how much work goes into it. Like, it takes a long time. And I'm proud of the looks that I've achieved, and I'm proud of what I've achieved, and the reputation that I've got now because of doing what I've done to the ability that I can do it to, and the best ability that I can. And I think when I'm 60 years old, I'll look back on all the looks that I've done over them 60 years, and I should still be proud. Like, I can only get better. Being a club kid is like the freedom of your own expression no matter what and, and it's completely genderless and it's completely free without any boundaries, without any perception of what you should be or how you should act. By going out and show the true self, if you are afraid to show it during the daytime mm. at work or something or you just like feel like Maybe you're not sure about what your gender is or stuff like that. You can go out in the night and be yourself without any boundaries. That's very important. Here in London, we found fashion photographer and filmmaker Augie Yordanov, who over the years has documented the life of club kids in his book, New Club Kids, London Party Fashion in the Naughties, which shows the creative and exuberant characters on the scene. Club kids fashion has a lot to do with um, DIY fashion and uh, things that are very theatrical or just fantasy. So it doesn't really go in the category of fashion. It's, it's more art than fashion. It's kind of wearable art. The term comes from the American club kids that uh, were kind of late 80s. On this side of the pond we had uh, the Blitz kids and the New Romantics who started the whole thing in the late 70s, early 80s, and um, all of them were um, going to the Blitz Club. The whole point of, of going out dressed like a freak, every, you know, obviously we mentioned that word in good connotation. Um, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of creativity, and it's usually done um, with the sort of need of self-expression. It's done with the purpose of expressing yourself. You know you're gonna attract attention, but you don't do it just to attract that attention. You do it because there's something inside of you that needs to get out, and that's how you feel, and this is who you are, and, and you do it because you want to be who you are. You want to be free. Most people want to be polite to people that they see in public, and that's not what I'm interested in. 
I prefer shocking. I like, I like seeing people's faces when I walk out with a hat saying suicide on it. When I walk down the street dressed like this, so in your face, it's so crazy. People are scared to look. People are scared to pay attention to what you're doing. So they look and they look away. And every time you catch their eye, they look away. And I've not addressed that. I don't think no one's gonna look at me when I'm walking down the street like this. I know people are gonna look at me. I've got, I've got mirrors, do you know what I mean? Like I've done my own makeup. I know how crazy it is. I know how intense it is. Um, so I, I think it's, flattering and I think it's a compliment. I, I love being photographed, looking in front of a camera, especially when it's taken this long to, to put this all on and to make come to such an effort. Um, I like, and of course it's good to have it documented to look back on in the future as well. The club kid scene that I documented is quite different from the original club kid scene that happened in the 80s in UK and America. There were a lot of really interesting, crazy, weird people that I found inspirational. So. I started taking a lot of pictures of them, a lot of them were my friends, and, um, and that's how I stumbled upon the club kits and uh, that scene in London that was kind of reviving around that time. But AIDS was the big thing that, that changed everything, I think. I think it changed everybody's attitude and it changed, certainly it changed our feeling um, that we were invincible. Um, and drugs. There was also that horrible period where people started taking heroin and that was pretty revolting. I didn't really want to be around that. It upset me. It upset me that people that I liked and admired or people that I liked and thought were brilliant suddenly were dabbling in like really disgusting, horrible drugs, which I've never had any time for really. The dangers of being a club kid are losing a nail, losing an eyelash, um, getting glitter ash and getting beaten up on a bus. Um, beaten up on the bus, obviously, the main one. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing like public transport. No, I wouldn't. I, I Maybe wouldn't, in Sweden I would because it's very accepted, but I, I wouldn't do it here. Everyone's so obsessed with their own opinion mattering and their own opinion being right that people get hurt because of it, and it's and it takes real guts to go out and leave the house like this every single day or leave the house like this when it's dark and it's night time and there's gangs around holding weapons that you've seen about it on the news and it's, it's crazy. You see all these things happening and I'm still going for it. <laughs> In the early 1980s, Scarlett and Michael Hardy, also known as Maria Malapasta, ran a club night in the back of heaven called Cha Cha. The club, to many, was considered one of the best nights out for the Blitz scene. Tuesday nights, Cha-Cha was the night to go to because you were going to have a great party. There was no theme. The theme was enjoying yourself, meeting your friends, having a dance, getting very drunk. Drunk was huge. Alcohol was always the biggest thing back in those days, much more so than drugs. Definitely alcohol. Um, and having a really, really great time. Life was different then, it was, had nothing to do with being a club promoter or making money or anything like that. It was just somewhere to go because we needed to make our own entertainment. People want money now, it's the simple question. That is like the, the one big difference between now and then. Over the decades, being a club kid has changed, fashions have evolved, reasons for going out are different and today's generation seem to be more self-conscious. Technology, the economy, and social media have all contributed to the transformation of today's club kids. The club kids scene has been changing a lot. Um, it's um, it's it's a movement like many other movements that kind of go, goes up and down. It's sort of a wave. It it has waves. So in the 80s, it was big time, you know, big wave. In the 90s, kind of went down. Um, there were still people dressing up. Then we saw 2000s big wave again and pretty much towards 2011-12 it went quiet for a few years nothing was really happening um, almost died out in the last year especially um, there is again a new wave of, of new club kids that are quite out there it seems at this current moment in time they especially in the uk are coming back with a bang influencing fashion, club scenes, and the media. It is not apparent when the next dip will be again.